Well, I just got home from work and my ever vigilant watchdog here just sprang into action to make sure I wasn't a burglar or a thief. Old Mac, he's he been doing pretty good since he's been living here, haven't you, sweetie? Yeah, you have. He's a good boy. He's gotten a little fatter, though. He's got a big old belly on him. And sitting on the table, I need to get him down off the table on the floor. Uh, UPS had delivered three boxes today from a fellow in Ohio. It is the next morning, and as you can see, the three boxes are now sitting in the corner on the deck. So stand by, because in those boxes is another radio with another story. Greetings once again from the corner on the deck. Boy, the old Arkansas weather has warmed up. It's just beautiful out here. We're getting a really good first taste of spring. Well, we just love it. And uh, it gives me a chance to get in front of the camera in the corner of the deck instead of standing behind it all the time and, you know, having to film all my videos on a bench. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is what was in those boxes. It's a complete uh, Heath kit, SB-102 HF ham radio rig, amateur radio rig. And as you know by the title on the video, it involves three R's. The first R is a fellow named Raymond. Raymond was born in 1913 and he died in 1980. Uh, apparently he was born in Indiana and he died in Colorado. He was the original owner of this rig and uh, after Raymond died, somehow this rig wound up at a uh, Uncle Sam's uh, pawn shop in Ohio, and it's I, I, don't, I don't know how long it sat there, but it was on it was for sale for $125 or, or thereabouts. And this is where the second R comes in, a fellow named Richard. Uh, a while back, Richard found himself in that pawn shop. He told me he says I don't. I don't go to pawn shops very much, but that day I just decided to go in there and look around, and this rig was sitting in there, and he said, I bought it for $125. Now, Richard uh, got, it work, got, got it set up, got it working and everything, and uh, set it up, I believe he said it was inside a Masonic Lodge, and he ran a net control station from there. Uh, he was the net control operator. For those of you who are not ham uh, radio uh you know, folks, a net controller is a fellow who sits at the radio and maybe once a week, maybe once a month, maybe twice a month, I, I don't know, whatever this kind of schedule has been set up. You know, all the folks that are in this group of uh, amateur radio people, he will just, uh, the net control operator goes out and says, you know, this is a net uh, for a certain given frequency, I mean, a certain uh, given uh, band, and... Uh, Anybody wants to call in, give us a call sign, have something to say, we'll be more than glad to have you join us on our net. And, and, and we, the club I belong to is the Faulkner County Amateur Radio Club here in Arkansas, and we have a, a two-meter net every Thursday. Well, today is Thursday, and at 7.30 tonight, I will have my little two-meter two -meter handheld uh, handy talkie, and hopefully be able to join in the net when the net control operator comes up and says, Who wants to talk? Who wants to say something? Give me your call sign. We'll go around get everybody's call sign on the first round. Then we'll come back and see what you got to say. You know, you can talk about anything. You know, my dog got sick or what, you know. I got an SB-102 <laughs> in the mail, you know. Okay, that takes care of the first two R's, Raymond and Richard. And uh, we'll get back to Richard here in a minute. I'll tell you about, I'll tell you what, we'll just stay with Richard for a while, then we'll get to the third R later on in the video. Richard watched my ham radio licensing YouTube series, and uh, he lives up in Ohio, and he, he's, he's gotten up in years, he said, he said he's fairly old, and, and his, uh, his vision is not as good as it used to be. Uh, he says he's, he has a lot of trouble seeing. And he no longer runs the net. He no longer has a use for this radio. And after watching my uh, licensing series, it was a whole bunch of videos for those of you who watched it, he contacted me about two months ago and he said, John, such a deal I have for you. <laughs> he says, I have, he told me about himself, he told me about uh, 
uh, how he had run the net in, in the Masonic Lodge, I think. Well, as luck would have it, right in the middle of filming, my uh, battery went dead on my camera. So, getting back to what I was saying, uh, Richard told me how he had run this net control setup out of this Masonic Lodge. He did it for about five years up in Ohio. And then finally, you know, it, it, he stopped and this radio wound up in storage somewhere. And he said he had, like I said, he, he told me he'd watched my, my videos and he said he... He understood me as a person to appreciate the old tube radio rigs, and he didn't want this thing uh, to wind up in, in another pawn shop. He didn't want it to wind up in a scrap heap or sold for parts or whatever. He just didn't want it to be discarded. So he said, John, I will give you this rig for the price of postage. What do you think? Well, you know, I was astonished. Again, you know, I get offers like this quite a bit, and I, and I always try to do whoever it is. I always try to do them justice. Uh, by by making it better and, and doing what they request. I thanked him profusely and I said, sure, I will take the rig. But I said, there's another part to the deal. Uh, this rig, after I get it, will be cleaned. It will be, I will try to get it functional because uh, he, he said it does need a little tender love and care. There are some things wrong with it. Uh, he had cut off the power cord because it was in bad shape. And uh, right here you can see the power cord kind of chopped off there and he said some of the tubes might be weak and, he, and yeah, I think he told me it's missing one tube shield I told him after I get that all pretty much squared away and I'm going to do a YouTube series on just getting it up and getting it operational and uh, I said what I want to do is send it on to another deserving ham a new ham I, said, I have a rig I have a HW 101 as you know from watching my YouTube series and I would like to bequeath this to a new ham somewhere who also has an appreciation for the old two rigs. Do you agree with that? He wrote back and said, sure. You know, you do whatever it is you want to do. He said, this radio will be yours. He said, that's, that's a good idea. Well, as you can see, it arrived in my doorstep a couple days ago here. And meanwhile, about a day or two, I think it was one day before this stuff arrived, I was contacted on the internet by a fella on through a, on a YouTube uh, message by a fellow named Russ. He's the third R. We had Raymond, the owner, Richard, who in between, who uh, who bought it at the pawn shop and sent it to me, and the third guy that entered the picture was named Russ, the third R. Russ is from Kentucky. Now, yeah, I'm Jay, but I'm just sort of the middleman in all this. I won't have much to do except to farm it in and farm it out, you know. Russ contacted me uh, basically the same way Richard did and said, you know, I watched all your uh, YouTube videos on getting a ham license. It was a good deal. I enjoyed it. It was fun. You got me motivated. I had a license many, many years ago, and I'm getting back into the game, and I'm soon to be testing for my technician and general class uh, license on the same day. And he said, if, by the way, he, says, he said, I appreciate you putting the, the videos up, you know, things of that nature, which is what I usually get. And he said, uh, your HW101, your Heath kid, if you ever think about selling it, let me know. I want to buy it. And I said, no, you know, <laughs> that radio will never be sold. It'll be with me till the day I croak, you know. However, I told him about Richard up in Ohio and what, he, what was coming in uh, shortly via UPS. And I told him about it. I told him the whole story, you know, about how Richard had run a Masonic Lodge net and he was up in years and his vision was failing him and things of that nature. And I said that I had agreed with Richard to give this to a deserving ham. And I told him, guess what? If you really have a, if you really have a, uh, a fondness for the old tube radios and you'd like to have an old rig like this, I have one coming in and I will give it to you for the price of postage. You will pay for the postage it took to send it to me and you will pay for the price of postage it takes to send it to you. But it all hinges, of course, on you uh, attesting and achieving your ham radio license. You've got to have your ticket in order to own this radio. What do you think? He came back and says, hey, that's great. I, that's a fantastic idea. I want it. When it comes in, let me know and, and send me pictures, and I'll rebuild it, and I'll do whatever needs to be done, and I'll get it on the air. So there's where we stand right now. The three R's. We've got Raymond. The original 
purchaser, Richard, the middleman, for several years there. And then, of course, Russ, the soon-to-be owner of this rig. And uh, I will go ahead and test it and put the, you know, try to get some noise out of it. I'm testing the tubes and everything. And I'll, I'll do some follow-up videos and show you how we make out on this. And maybe, maybe I'll put a new, you know, power cord on it. I've already cleaned it. It was pretty heavy with cigarette uh, tar. Really, uh, uh, apparently the original owner, Richard, I mean, uh, Raymond, was a heavy smoker and uh, probably cigars back in those days. And it was just all brown, but it's all been clean. It looks really nice now. A little bit of rust here and there on that power transformer. But uh, I think Russ in Kentucky can deal with that. So I'm waiting for him to get his ticket. In the meantime, uh, I will, like I said, put up one or two videos. Uh, it also came with some manuals. I have a couple of manuals. I have an assembly manual, which tells how to operate the radio right here. It's a reproduction from vintage manuals. And a folder full of uh, improvements on the radio, uh, what Russ can do to make it even better. So until then, uh, when we do the next video on this, I, I think I can wrap it up maybe in two, maybe three videos at the most. I hope. <laughs> until then, from the corner on the deck, this is John.